Um, so good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. My, my name is Molly Benton. I'm a community fellow. My organization is Maricopa County Department of Public Health. And my role is on the Healthy Community Design and Active Living Team. So my project is titled, I know this is lengthy with the subtitle, but um, Partnerships and Community-Led Systemic Change, an in-depth exploration of public-private community engagement best practices centered around health equity, diversity, and inclusion in public health interventions. So to give a little background, um, with over 4.4 million residents in Maricopa County and 25 municipalities to be served, Maricopa County Department of Public Health is the third largest public health jurisdiction in the country. So the SNAP program, the Federal Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, um, funnels roughly $2 million a year into the health interventions we implement into Maricopa County communities. So um, one thing we're thinking about now though is although we have the intentions of including an equity and justice lens in all of our work, we know we are not quite cutting it on this effort with no clear process or guidelines in terms of how best to reach communities for things like input, lived experiences, and priority issues to guide what this work should actually look like. So additionally, um, community engagement will officially be a requirement to include in all interventions across all teams in our office for our next five-year work plan beginning in 2021. So um, with my work being active living, my problem and research will be specific to that work as well. Um, my problem is Maricopa County Department of Public Health's active living interventions, initiatives, and programs are not designed using community participation. This means they are not always directly responsive to the needs of the community and do not address the diverse nature of the community. So to take a quick but deeper look into this problem and see just how much we're missing, here is one small example. So this story was shared to a colleague on my team by a community partner in regards to having barriers to park access and use in her neighborhood here in Maricopa County. Um, this woman is Muslim and part of a network of other Muslim women, all with a shared concern of safety and cultural differences in their community and with an interest in implementing a solution to the issue they're experiencing. So the quotes on this slide are pieces of a proposal this woman took the initiative to submit to apply for funding for a more inclusive option for physical activity. So not only do these women not feel safe in parks in their own communities, but the parks also don't necessarily accommodate the privacy they require in respect to their culture and beliefs. The story was eye-opening to myself and others in our department. From a healthy community design perspective, the solution to this problem is fairly simple, reasonable, and affordable when considering funding for something like this. All they're requesting is to create a safe space for Muslim women to exercise and build community with other women in the neighborhood. However, the bigger picture problem here is that had this woman not taken a lead on actively trying to advocate for change like she did, this voice could have fallen into the seemingly large gap of other unheard voices with similar experiences. As much as we as public health are supportive of this work and supplementing community-led initiatives with groups like this, if we are not authentically engaging with an equitable and inclusive approach, so many voices are likely not reached and issues like this are simply not on our radar. How would we have known this was even an issue in this particular neighborhood? And again, this is just one small example among many and more importantly, the unknown. So this brings me to my research question. How can large public health departments authentically engage the underserved and minority communities to elicit input on how we as an organization can be better partners in supporting and sustaining healthy, safe communities for all. My research process will start with conducting a literature review on community engagement best practices, specifically with health equity, inclusion, and diversity as key priorities. Next, I will transition into a design thinking process. The literature review will determine what this will look like and the logistics of that process, but I presume Consulting with community engagement experts, as well as hosting a community forum or workshop, virtual or in person to be determined, will be a key part in that process as well. Lastly, I will develop my resource based on the literature review and the design thinking process. So with all that being said, 
any recommendations of literature and or community engagement experts that you know of, maybe it's you, maybe it's colleagues that could contribute to this process would be greatly appreciated. Um, moving on. So the outcomes of this process that I'm attending are to um, get a definition of community and clear values for um, this resource, um, which will come to a compilation of community engagement planning tools that fit our set values, the prioritization of these tools based on what kind of projects they work well for, an assessment of whether or not you need to build a new tool or tools for community engagement, um, the selection of a pilot program to test one of these tools, tools and a completion of a pilot test of the tools. For my deliverable, I plan to create an online toolkit hosted by MCDPH, ideally, consisting of a compilation of best practices of authentic community engagement that align with the de defined core values. We believe this to be the first of its kind to be shared by a public health department, which will be validated um, with my research. Although my design thinking process will have an active living focus, this toolkit will be broad enough to, you, to be useful for any type of community engagement work. Also, um, this is another ask I have of the group. I am looking for any recommendations of how to develop and format something like this, as this is definitely not my area of expertise. So if anyone does have this knowledge and is willing to share it, please connect with me on that as well. Really um, taking advantage of being a part of this group here. So finally, what now? What will come out of all of this? Um, so MCDPH can work more intentionally to partner with communities to better understand their needs and priorities to inform both how we structure the process of capturing this information in future communities, as well as how future interventions can be tailored to build upon and support these community needs. Um, outlining the values that must be present in this type of work can hopefully lead to a long-term shift in the culture of the department in prioritizing health equity, diversity, and inclusion in all future work. Um, we, expanding efforts to elevate community voice in neighborhoods that are currently underserved can help to stimulate future community-led initiatives, civic engagement, and advocacy for change. This will also help to reach more unheard people and or groups like our community partner, for example, whose story I shared earlier. With all of that being said, um, Maricopa County Department of Public Health being so large has the chance to be a national leader on this approach which is an exciting opportunity to impact change on a larger scale. Um, in closing, as you can see, I'm clearly still in the very beginning stages of this project and have a lot of um, tricky and challenging work ahead of me in making movement on this, but I am hopeful for positive and productive outcomes. I feel so grateful to be a part of such an incredible program and cohort all committed to such impactful work. Um, and I emphasize that any constructive feedback would be extremely helpful to me and I fully welcome it and value it greatly throughout this um, entire process and through the rest of this project. Um, so thank you for listening to all of my story and work and goals and research process. And I want to acknowledge the many wonderful people who have helped me bring ideas to life, collaborated with me and supported me on this work especially in my last minute scrambling to map this all out after being on sick leave for three weeks. Um, so thank you to Patricia, Erica, and Katie for taking the time to meet and give feedback and work through this process with me. Thank you to my MCDPH colleagues, David Dupe, Gail Grander, public health colleague, Michaela Smith for her insights and to the entire Knowledge Exchange for Resilience Fellowship Program and to the Maricopa County Department of Public Health for making this project possible. And lastly, a big important thank you to my anonymous community partner who was generous enough to give me permission to share her story that was mentioned earlier. And that is all I have. I probably talked too fast through that all, <laughs> but thank you so much. And you had perfect timing. Thank you. Very good. And applaud again. This is just wonderful. I, I, I just want to take a moment to Molly to say um, how impressive this is after you had been uh, out for a bit and just to jump back in and 
it's just pretty incredible how much progress that you've made and the clarity of your thinking here. So I wanted to congratulate you for that because I know it hasn't been easy. That's impressive. Thank you. Yeah. Great. So um, comments, suggestions, uh, questions? Everyone's just saying great job, Molly, <laughs> in the chat. Molly, this is Nikita. I have a quick question. In one of your slides, you um, were stating that for those that have a healthy, safe, and I don't remember if you said community or what word you define, but how are you, um, how are you defining healthy and safe for the purposes of this project? So I guess healthy and safe is like the underlying goal of what uh, our work is driven by as far as our SNAP Ed work plan. Um, so for healthy and safe communities, um, I, I mean, I guess my project is kind of touching on how people have different perspectives of this, but in my perspective, I think um, inclusion and equity and diversity all needs to be um, encompassed by into a healthy, safe community. And that's what makes a community healthy and safe. So I guess acknowledging people like the woman's story I shared and building upon um, improving communities in that way would be supportive of um, future healthier and safer communities. So in my work specifically, um, like by definition, I guess, um, including or promoting physical activity in communities is what makes them safe or healthier. So hope that answers your question a bit. It's very complicated the way that um, this work is kind of laid out and how the, the language differs among the funding streams and the organizations. Um, but yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm.